Fuck fish um, right, plants are the best. No, the, no, no. Uh, another thing I was gonna say with the- what, 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 what? No, I'm saying no to Guffy saying, fuck fish, plants are the best. Look, plants can't- plant I can't hear Guffy. <laughs> plants don't feel anything, plants don't- plants don't suck. You can do anything to plants. Is, is he talking? Yeah, he's- we're gonna have the- we're gonna have the fish versus plants uh, argument. You know, I can actually, uh -huh. um... I know a bit about plants, but only terrestrial ones, unfortunately. <laughs> I, just, I, I have a pothos underwater and I have mo terrestrial moss underwater. So, you know. Terrestrial plants suck. I still have a submerged all they, do, all they do is put plants in soil and they grow. And those well, I, um, I did a bit of work in a plant Fire lab Fire. for a little while. But we were looking at um, photosynthetic pathways. Which are probably not too applicable here. <laughs> Big word. Word. Big word. Big Big what word. did what that... did Jimmy what did Duffy's Snake gonna start type arguing in about Bible plant rights? No 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 no. Look what Snake type Snake type in Bible study. Guffy's cum can be used as an alternate energy if you if you if you consider my ass hollow vehicle. Okay. Uh so let's uh I think we need to uh remute and regroup. <laughs> I think we need a we need a Okay, so, sorry sorry but I had to say it. I was gonna talk about my Unidentified species of Akara that killed my. Yeah, what do you care? Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's standing. That's standing. <laughs> okay, wait. Un un unclassified species of Akara. Nobody cares. <laughs> wait. So, uh, let's just um, regroup and get a hold again. Um, you there, Funk? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Sweet. Um. Okay, can I just throw this in real quick, Funk? You know what I want you to do? What do you want me to do? I want you to, uh, I want you to get some epic... Oh, wait, okay, well, you prefer the salt. The salt tank's your favorite, right? Uh, I, I consider myself a saltwater key before. Yeah, so you'd say, you'd say your saltwater tank is your, like, magnum opus? Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> currently. No, no, because, I mean, I mean... Sorry, I'm, I've been drinking a lot. That's okay. About six, seven years ago, I, I was really into coral, like, mm -hmm. really species of cropera i did i did stuff called zeovit which is a very technical methodology i mean the amount of effort i put into propagating very sensitive species of coral was just it was just insane and i i actually got away from that and and just keep basic soft corals both synthetic organics like we discussed earlier yeah uh, and i really just just care i'd be i kind of just came back to what i always loved on saltwater like the cool fish so mm -hmm. I, I keep fish yeah uh, my 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 centerpiece fish is a uh, Hootie the Blowfish. He's a um, kind of a legend on the on the discords and the servers and and everywhere. Um, so I, I'm not really like into the technical stuff. Like honestly, if I threw delicate species of stony corals in my tank, they probably wouldn't do well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, if I really wanted to, I could button up my tank and, and get back into it. But yeah, but just not not like I used to be. But I I yeah I used to. And now now I just kind of keep a pretty simple bigger tank for a pet puffer fish and some other cool yeah, fish it's... here what i'll do is i'll, I'll post my tank uh, when it was salt water i'll post my tank hang on no it's my yeah, let's, tank let's meme folder I'll, I'll post the tank when it was salt and i'll post the tank now okay right. uh, so he, he, here's the tank when it was see, salt yeah, water oh so, <laughs> and then and that it looked like shit there in my opinion i'll, I'll post a picture before it's i move comfy though i mean you can tell her it's just getting huge though <laughs> And this is the tank uh, as of like two days ago. I, I just I just cut all the hornwort back, so it kind of looks a little raggedy. But this is the tank, now. same exact tank. Find a picture of the tank because when I before I moved and I, I was gone for three months, my wife took care of it, and she doesn't know diddly squat about aquariums, and it just like was on fire. <laughs> um, do you do you think that one was better yeah, as like, fresh or salt? Uh, yeah, I don't think it. And they're both really nice. I don't know. Your black water is really comfy, though. <clears throat> but... All right, this this was the tank when I was when I was in Seattle. This is probably one of my favorite tanks I ever owned. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. Chicken Still have a lot of the same corals, but like the the like the same ones, like not the same type, but you mean like the same. So basically, when I when I moved, a lot of them died. The 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 rock got really really cold. Mm. Uh, when, I, when I moved, I moved in the dead of winter from Washington to California. And, uh, but like the corals basically receded, like you know their colonies, they receded to half inch pieces and they just grow back. I mean, yeah. soft corals are the are awesome animals because they will grow in your toilet. Okay. Um, with 
they're very i mean if the water isn't toxic and you have a, a, a plant growing light on it they will grow and they will thrive so i should so that's how that's the quote i should look at <laughs> If it's soft and squishy, generally nine times out of ten, it will grow very well. All right, that's pretty cool. I noticed you have gravel in your like salt tank. Is that a, that's not a conventional thing, is it? Or uh, no, no, it's, no, it's not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I actually my my hundred gallon tank as it stands right now. Here, I'll, I'll post a picture of it. Yeah. Is the that's first tank I've used with sand in maybe a decade. So the tank, anyone that knows the story of my tank, it's uh, the gold, front cane is all fucked up because I got it for free. The guy didn't take care of it and put it in storage, so it's hard to find a flattering photo. Um, but I, I used to use crushed gravel. Um, a, I just I like I like the figure. I just like how it looks. Like that, yeah, that was the first nice. reason I did it. But what happened when I used it is two two things happened. Uh, first off, because it actually you know didn't ever go anaerobic. When you have a you know thick you know fine sand bed, you, you get denitrification activity. Um, and uh, you know, you'll, you'll get, you know, nitrogen removal and, you know, all the stuff happening. When you use crushed coral, you don't get those pockets of anaerobic activity. The water can flow through it. But what happens is you get so much microfauna, little worms and critters scuttling through that it created a ton of biodiversity that I've never seen. Now, what also happens is it gets absolutely fucking filthy. And um, as a result, I mean, the, the water in all my crushed coral tanks would test water, you know, water chemistry that would make a briefer have a heart attack. The nitrates would be like 200 ppm, not even joking. Like it would, you'd stick a test strip in there and just turn blood red and nothing bad happened. Like the, <laughs> the tank just thrived and killed it. And I don't know what it was, but, but that cr thick crushed coral just created this, this pit of biodiversity I've never been able to replicate. Um, unfortunately, crushed coral is really hard to get on a scale to fill a hundred gallon tank. And I, all my 40 gallons, I wouldn't have to gravel back it, and I would pull out just jet black water. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mimic it on a 100 gallon scale, but 40 gallons or less, I will use crushed coral every time. That's pretty cool. I just fed my fishy friends. Very nice. This was a very Sweet. short feeding. It usually takes me like 25 minutes. Nice. I'm, I'm meticulous about it. I like to make sure everyone gets their bit. That's nice. Let, let, let's let's talk about fish feeding. How do you guys do it? Uh, yes, I just I, like I, swipe, I swipe. drop it in. You just keep plants. That. No. <laughs> I um I just feed like I'll feed uh, most of my fish. I actually feed every other day except my sword tails because they're gluttons, so I feed them every day. I feed every day, but I am very meticulous about it. So mm. the first thing I do is I today I just tossed everything in because <laughs> I've been feeding them meticulous for a week. They can live with one day yeah. without it. Um, but what I'll do is the first thing I do, I drop in my big um, pellets for my uh, stenopoma or any mm. crickets I have if I have crickets. But obviously with Corona, I can't go out and get crickets right now. So they're eating pellets. Then I throw in um, a floating pellet for the African butterfly fish and make sure they're eating. Then I throw in a smaller sinking pellet that's just for the anastomus that's too small for the stenopoma and everything. Anastomus get fed. Then after that, I drop in my bloodworms. I shake them a bit, use my tongs, and then I stick them in specific parts of the aquarium because I need to make sure there's enough bloodworms for my Cynodontus angelicus, my catfish. I need to make sure there's enough for both of my rope fish because they can be a little bit finicky and I want to make sure that they're getting their food. And I need to make sure there's enough for the ghost knife because he's a glutton and will eat anything. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't own fish flakes or pellets. I don't use them. I don't feed them. I have no dry food I have, at all. I have bug bites. What, what do you do now when we're in cool. times of Corona where you can't go to the store every day? I go to the store. Okay. <laughs> um, my LFS is actually, it's right now it's listed as essential, but it might be closing down in the next week or so. Yeah, really? So, what... Yeah, but a bunch of my fish store buddies are all on employment there. So my, 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 I have two fish stores. My, the one I used to work at, um, they, they actually is a good conversation too, is how people are handling, you know, with what's, what's going on with COVID. Yeah. Um, my, my one fish store, they, they basically close the doors, but they're, they're doing, um, kind of like, you know, curbside pickup. So I'll just yeah. text my buddy, yeah. like, Hey man, I need to get some fish food, yada, yada, yada. The other fish story I have is much more your traditional mom and pop. It's one guy, one guy owns it and his buddy runs it. Uh, they stayed completely open, so I, I've been going there for water and stuff. Uh, but uh, 
the, the, the industry is shut down. No one's importing fish, so I, I can't buy fish, and I want to buy fish. Yeah. Um, What's worrying me is that I, um, a lot of my LFSs aren't getting in a lot of the foods I'm using. Yeah. So I've been looking at um, grocery store alternatives to fish food. Dude, I need. Make your, you can make frozen food. You go buy, especially because you keep predatorial fish. Go, go yeah. to the fish store, or fish store. Go, go to the grocery <laughs> store buy uh buy frozen shrimp frozen clams frozen scallops i try to find like a like a like an asian grocery store those, those places have some legit stuff yeah. um and you basically put it in a blender and you mix it with gelatin and you freeze it in like an ice cube dish or, or uh i used to use pillow i used pill reminders because that was just the right amount those like bigger old bigger squares um you can make your own fish food i'm actually pretty like so i have like i feed the bug bite pellets because you know whatever i've got smashed sword tails like it's not but I have like about I have frozen Daphne and bloodworms, but I, I I slack a little bit on the frozen food, mostly because I'm up really late, so my fish end up eating really late. So I'm actually kind of glad I've been slacking because now I have this awesome like frozen food to feed them because I haven't been using it, so I'm not low on stock. What I am low on though is my algae wafers. I have like one left. So um, yeah, a lot of my guys are, are more predatory, so yeah. I I fed them stuff like krill, shit like that before. Yeah. Um, live insects are their favorite, but. I can't really get those right now. Just hope they catch it. In. <laughs> but um, definitely the big thing with a lot of these aquariums is, um, with a lot of these fish as a whole, is that fish really do best off of the diet that they have evolved yeah, to that's eat. Correct. Their environment, and um, Vegan I think a lot fish. of uh, there are those. Those do exist. <laughs> we do have those. Um, so I find do a vegan lot charts. Of uh what the fuck? yeah no um so yeah with my guys i'm definitely i'm working through some alternatives to feed them i don't want to go running around outside and grab 200 spiders so i can feed them <laughs> i mean my my dario is literally that that bowl is self-sustaining like there's daphnia like living in the uh, floaters and he just eats them whenever he wants I've, I've never fed him i fed him a blood worm once and he looked at it and then looked at me and swam away so <laughs> And that, that's how aquarium should be. I yeah. mean, there's so many fish too. Like, I mean, with reef tanks, like these refugians and stuff, like you can create a self-feeding reef yeah. tank. If you don't go crazy with the stock. I, I want to chuck. Um, I want to get some like um, like microfauna in my swordtail tank because I know they'd survive in the density of the floaters and the anacris on the top. And like my blackwater has. Uh, well, my blackwater had some stuff in it. Now it's mostly. Sometimes you'll move a floater and you'll see a freaking like gay ass worm, and then my betta will eat it in like one second. So. <laughs> So you know how you guys talked about uh, feeding your fish the most natural diet. What do you guys think of live foods, and why do you think not many, not why do you think not as many people use them as? Because I, I think oh. I think I think more people should definitely culture yeah. live foods. I think it's just well, convenient. Yeah, but, yeah it's, it's a convenient thing. And you remember, man, we, us talking, we are not your average freshwater aquarist. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you can say you can say I was, but same with Daphne, yeah. right? But all I do. Just put a tub in the yard, in the garden. I know, but just I, I think... add some leaf litter. So you're you're, you're, you're not you're not everyone. Definitely. definitely, most people don't want a Very bucket of little yeah, water. It's because even though it's easy and like I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing that pretty soon. But it just like some people just are like, well, what? Well, think about it like this: like half of the people who are keeping fish out there are keeping keeping bettas in like apartments. Like, where are they gonna put their Daphnia tub? Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely. Uh, my guys yeah. are um, on the sidewalks. All of you. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, I can't put Daphne in my tank. It's they're, they're too small. They're not gonna. Yeah, I don't no, that makes sense. Give a shit about them. Well, that's why so you for me, hamsters. yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it's the yeah. I, uh, that's why I drop a hamster in every day. <laughs> <laughs> Feed puppy to Oscar. People, people that keep people, let's say, live in the apartment. You don't need you don't need the daft you can you can Grindle you can keep worms. Like, grindle worms or micro worms or white worms. You can keep those in very small well, containers. Guppy, nobody wants to deal with... go tell some chick like... <laughs> <laughs> Folks right though. I Guffy, I agree with you. More you people can, should do it, but I mean you need to grow yeah. No one wants to mess with worms, man, when you just feed them, you know, fish food. Just like no one wants to grow you know, raise chickens to slaughter to when you go buy pre cooked like chicken or tentacles. whatever. Who needs to know about your worms? I don't... Sure, <laughs> makes you sure makes you vomit every time you open. Sure makes you want to be sick, but like it's good for your fish. What's worth it? Just think about yeah, it. Think good. about yeah. okay, that. That is pretty funny. Right. Think about just it. This way, like, what, what's easier? Like, you, okay, I'm a new aquarist. I've just set up my 10 gallon neon tetra guppy tank. Like... 
into it. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, hmm, I need to feed my fish. What am I going to do? Am I going to culture Daphnia or am I going to go get some freaking... No, because all I need to do is open my micro and culture tub. I open my micro and culture tub, swipe my finger on the inside and dip in my error from micro and bam, they're fed for me. Hey guys, we were talking about live food, so let's go listen here really quick. For about, I want to say four months, the floaters in my 10 gallon were populated with some springtails that ended up in there and I think they were just living off of those for a while, so that was pretty cool. I should reintroduce them, honestly, but again, that's, I mean, you couldn't use spring, springtails are like the tiniest freaking things ever, so that's not, you know, yeah, it's I fine mean, for me when I have freaking pencil fish who are like, doop -a -doo. <laughs> Going back to what we were talking about earlier, there's no doubt that if it's an animal that eats live in the wild, it will do best off of live. Yeah. There's no, no doubt to me. Yeah. Um, then again, a lot of my fish in the wild are eating small insects and such, so I feed them crickets when I can. But have you ever kept crickets in a no, terrarium to I feed to them? But my you girlfriend ever? has. So. Yeah, I've done it many times, yeah. and let me tell you, there will always be a cricket outside of that tank. You can't, yeah, you, you can't stop it. There will always be a cricket in your house somewhere. I mean, my They'll dog fucking... would probably just eat it. <laughs> yeah, they smell. They smell like shit. Yeah, they smell. Um, they're loud as fuck. Uh, crickets are the worst. I and um, I, st I stopped keeping my uh, my cricket tub when um, I pulled back my sheets one day, and I, I make my bed. All right, I'm not some yeah. slovenly heathen. <laughs> like I pulled me. back my sh I pulled back my sheets, and there was fucking two crickets in my bed. And when there's two, that means that there's five more I can't see. And at that point, I realized. At, at that point, I took my cricket tub. Um, I immediately dumped the whole thing in my tank, and I set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this actually. This, you mentioning crickets escaping is kind of funny because you know I, I have my isopod tank, and that's not for anything. It's just haha, <laughs> isopods. And I have this saran wrap over the top, right? They have chewed holes in that, like at least like every few months there'll be a hole in there, and I'll find like five isopods just chilling in my room. It's honestly horrible. Yeah. But I mean, ice pods are a bit funny. I, uh, my dog will just go I, up to them. I, I, I knocked over a fruit fly culture once. That sucked. A what? What is he poisoned? Fruit fly. Oh. oh. Jesus, you better Ugh. not. If you come to my lab and knock over my fucking fruit fly cultures, I'll kill myself. <laughs> they, they were wingless, too. So there's like oh my god, dude. Everywhere. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I always have spiders fall on my shrimp tank, and I was like, find the shrimp like feasting on spiders when I like woke up. <laughs> Weirdest bro, thing ever. Bro, your shrimp feast on spiders? I chucked a spider in my sword tail tank. Literally, one they ate off one leg and then it crawled out. And now it like lives in my goldfish plant. What the fuck? Yeah, I think it's, uh, there's definitely some fish that are easier than others to keep, uh, keep a live colony. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely, uh, in times of, uh, virus definitely worthwhile to figure out some ways to uh keep them going without that maybe a future podcast we can talk about homemade fish foods and yeah. what to do in the power outage or something stuff like that yeah i mean having a yeah. having live food yeah, actually really nice. having a culture of live food right now is actually pretty good because then it's just like oh i ran out of pellets so just whatever it's like self-sustaining sure, kind of thing it's not for everyone, but it's good for a fish, and yeah. if you can handle it, and no, have the time for it, it's sure. definitely worth it. It's definitely, um, Payara, right? Uh, Payara, without okay. their wild natural diet, do those things do not live long at all. They live like, what, how long is it? Two, three years? And in the wild, they're living 10, 15. Damn. It's just, just completely their diet and how they're living. Uh, let's, uh, shift gears here. What else, what else should we talk about? Yes. Uh, Jim, Jim doesn't want to talk. Uh, we can talk about nightfish and how much they suck. That's <laughs> a good oh, question. Let's talk about nightfish. As I was saying, um, <laughs> yeah, balls is like the best fish to ever exist. Like, got me using muted them. <laughs> See, I I love knife fish, and you make me hate them. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you like freaking like furries who play Minecraft. I'm just like, man, I like this game, but. I don't. <laughs> uh, um, look, I like, I like oh, time was long time about Zakara. Sure, I'm talking about Zakara. I like, I like you guys right, talking here. about your um, like based like fish and feeding them live food. I'm just staring at my like smashed sword tails all swim around. All right, let's let Jim talk about knife fish. All right, Jim, why don't you enlighten us on uh, how to breed knife fish and how you suck so bad at it? Zero TTS water, obviously. I, I, okay. I, listen, listen, listen. Okay. 
lower conductivity. That's all there is. Okay. But... Okay. Um, I want to make that its own video. How to he's making this. me. He's making me want to throw my TDS. Me too. <laughs> Imagine checking your TDS. How bad? Okay. okay but like real shit though. If we talking about like actually breeding knife fish, it's like, it's like it's really difficult. It's like makes it makes no sense either because. There's like multiple factors, like the rain shit can make them spawn, the conductivity can make it spawn, there's like TDS, there's like all types of little things, but I really don't know which one really does it, so I just do a mix. What if you just rub them together and then like squeeze the female, does that work? See, that's the thing, because the knife fish, they don't sexually mature until like the conductivity is at around like 23. The they like don't have a dick, they don't have a vagina, they don't have anything until then. What the hell? Can yeah, they like only sexually what? mature so, so when the like... conductivity is lower. You just like fill the tank up with DI or something? Yeah, the conductivity is like I think it's like the ability of the electricity to move through the water, yes. and yes. that's probably why their uh, um, sexual organs mature. So, so you so get in water because it'll it'll be more less conductive. Yes. In theory. Yes. So you how, like, you how do you ensure the fish are getting the ad like adequate adequate nutrients from the food when you're when you're keeping them in such new like so, such nutrient feed them good food? Well, They're not filter that's feeders, literally man. Like, this it's like literally the same conditions in the wild. Like if you look up those Amazon videos, when they test the water, the TDS is fucking three. Like because it's ninety percent rainwater. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm rain outside. I'm I'm collecting rainwater right now. So you're try so you have to increase the conductivity to a certain point. No, you decrease to... conductivity. Co decrease you decrease conductivity. TDS you, and conductivity. You're, you're, so you're basically pure to... H2O. So you do 50% water and you're pure H2O. So you yes. Alright, so basically just do large 100% gallon water change with um, gallon. RODI water. <laughs> that's, that's all you have to do. Just big water change. Easy. No. Interesting. I, I think I think the logic is you're trying to mimic like a pretty aggressive rainforest, and these fish basically live in rainwater. You know, it's not like a per they don't live in a permanent body of water. They go with the flow, no, you know, so to speak. They go with yeah. the flow. And, the only problem is, is uh, the only problem is they don't have um, gills, so they just drown. <laughs> <laughs> Best fish. <laughs> Hundred percent gallon water change. <laughs> <laughs> bro, look, look it, it's like it's two AM, bro. I'm tired. That's how you breed quarries, right? Hundred percent water. Of, um... God, I'm gonna kiss you, Funk. Okay, you know what, guys? Actually, I wanna I wanna have a, like a bit of a fun, fun, funny moment for all of us to participate in. I did this with Andy once, but uh, it was just him and I, so it wasn't recorded. But uh, what is the fucking worst fish? And you can't say bettas, you can't I, say so clownfish, we're, we're and you can't say honest, goldies because we're, we're being easy. dead honest, bro. We're being dead honest. You can't say so anything. Wait, you can't say anything easy though. You can't say smash clowns. You can't say bettas. So you can't say goldies. Okay, so, so, we're here. so I, nothing I just in red or fucked up. This is the worst fish. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, one of mine died because it got stuck in a hole and couldn't get out. Okay, worst fish. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah. I'm gonna need to think about this because. I, I don't want to pick the obvious ones. I don't want to say, oh, the red tail shark is bad because it's a big minnow that kills all the fish. Because who f cares? Actually, I, 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 have, I have an answer. It's a saltwater answer, though. So uh, that's I'll fine. post. Right, right here is the worst aquarium fish. His entire genus is the worst aquarium fish. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Dory. Paracanthus heptatus, the hippo tang, and all of his cousins in the canthus genus. These fish fucking suck. Why do they suck, Funk? Well, let me tell you, these fish, first off, have the worst fucking track record with bringing in the worst, like, god-awful prozone infections that will kill your entire population in 48 hours. These fish swim miles of ocean a day. Miles. When you put them in anything but a 300-gallon tank, they go batshit insane and beat the shit out of your fish. And Wait, so I have a question. Shut up, I'm not done. All right. <laughs> They make they beat the shit out of fish with these things, these little scalpels right behind their tail. That's why they call them surgeon fish. So they're mutilating your fish, and they go absolutely stir crazy in captivity, and they don't eat fucking algae. Now let me show you another fish. This fish is another common aquarium fish, a fox face. Belongs to a genus of fish called Cygenius. Cygenius are absolutely indestructible. They don't bring in any disease. They don't bring in any aggression. They're venomous as shit. They actually hurt more than a lionfish, and I can vouch for that personally. Their entire <laughs> genus are incredibly docile, disease 
resistant and they eat algae like you wouldn't believe. They have like little rake like teeth adapted just to scrape algae off the rocks. But everyone wants fucking Dory <laughs> and everyone wants a stupid movie and they want all these pretty tangs and all their fish do is get sick and die, permanently corrupt their tank with a protozoan infection that they cannot shape because of that fucking movie. And I think tangs are the worst aquarium fish. So what you're and saying is the, the, fish are what you're saying is finding Nemo bad. Finding <laughs> Nemo bad. Okay. All right, I got. But I Nemo got a hot is a take. Not a okay. I I got a fucking hot take for you guys. Okay. Great disdain for any fish with messed up genetics or is inbred or something like that. So I want to go wild species that I just fucking hate. Okay. And it's fucking garamis. You hate garamis? I hate garamis. What about, honey, what about honey garami? I hate honey garami. I was going to get one. Uh, wait, what about they're, they're... No, licorice garamis are kind of cool. I, like I, I hate them. There are two garamis that I'll tolerate, and that's snakeskin and samurai. And even them. Fuck them. <laughs> okay, um, Oscar, how do you feel about the fact that I had a powdered blue garami? <laughs> That's that's that doesn't even count as a Gamry. That's no, just an abomination. His name, uh, his name was Gary. Gary. I do Oscar, not like how, Gary. how do you hate this fish? How do you what? hate this fish right here? No, how do you hate him? That doesn't even look like him. It looks like a beta Rami. <laughs> I just also, um, how, how do you hate this fish too? You, you have shared opinions, so we're gonna talk about this. This now, fish is a badass fish. Hang on. I just feel like <laughs> bro, he cute. Hey, bro, he Jack, cute. Jack is pretty rad. That he thing cute. is an abomination. He cute. You're an abomination. I just think. <laughs> well, yeah. I like their little stupid leg things. I yeah. just um. I mean, I was gonna say all of cichlids, but um. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the the most, the most <laughs> diverse, largest group of fish on the planet. You hate. Yeah, but it's not that I hate all of cichlids. It's just that I hate all of people who own cichlids. Bro, you hate Conan? Like Conan. Co oh, Conan. Like Conan. Where's Conan? Conan, Conan, Conan? Conan doesn't talk to Mr. server in like a year. Co Co Conan does. Uh, I like too many cichlids. And I like Conan's too many cichlid here. keepers. But Grammy are just... They're annoying. They're... Why do you say Grammy? That's how Canadians say it. That's how <laughs> we say it here in Canada. Oh, um, okay. And I it's, say it wrong. And it's 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> I just I'm not a huge fan of them. I I like I like related species. I love my stenopoma, but Grammy are just they're just annoying. I don't know why they annoy me. I think it's because everyone who owns a Grammy needs to make sure that everyone around them knows that they own a Grammy. <laughs> As everyone Dude. in the chat can attest, as they all tell me, but oh look, I own a Grammy. That's why. Do you hate me? Yes, I do hate you. <laughs> fuck, fuck. What, what, what is your least favorite fish and why? You, you've been kind of quiet. Okay, Funk. I know you said Buck, but I thought you said Funk, and I was like, what? <laughs> you dressing yourself? <laughs> fuck, fuck his camera shot. He doesn't like to talk. He has a very high bitch voice. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, I. I do not like African cichlids. Cichlids? Because of the community of people around them. That's why I hate coral now. Yeah, coral kind of sucks. Of Zoas. I kept. Those I are kept. Um, I kept black cultists for a bit. I like them. Cultists are cool. I, I I have a soft spot for front. I, actually, my favorite African cichlid. I love Sutrophius. I love Trophius. If I did yeah. African cichlid thing, I'd do like a huge group of like, like Du Boises or something, or like some like cool set like. I like Frontosa. Some Africans a lot. are cool. I, my uh, freshwater wizard has a 560 gallon tank. When you walk in, that has like two giant royal panaks and like ten giant Zaire wild caught Frontosas, and they're huge. They're like fucking dinosaurs. That's all. all right, here's a, here's a little bit of oh more nerd question for you guys. Favorite African cichlid lake and least favorite African cichlid lake. Well, least favorite's Malawi. Like, no, the, not even question. Yeah. Okay, good. We're on the same page. I Malawi know. worst, Tanganyika best. Malawi. All I know. Uh, about, is best. All I know about cichlids is my uncle had a Jack Dempsey and it killed everyone. So. It's <laughs> not an African cichlid. Do we need to talk about this? Oh, Just like. Sorry, I don't know. Hey, no, hey, I know nothing about cichlid. I know nothing. Just about like it. how. You know what the best? Well, watch this, guys. I'm gonna trigger someone that's on this chat. 
the best South American cichlid is the convict. What? <laughs> Uh, I, was trying, I was trying to get uh, times to like job all back in Central American. <laughs> Kill Funk. <laughs> funk, uh, what's, your, what's your opinion on th this guy? What? Whoa. Uh, oh, the Harlequin Tusk? Yeah. Uh, they're awesome. They're actually really okay, cool. They so are, okay. Harlequin... I've always yeah, thought they were fish. cool. So, t tusk, fish, tusk fish in general and Mallorasses are probably some of my favorite fish. So, the Harlequin Tusk, they, they, they actually look dramatically different depending on where they're sourced. So when you put you put a picture up as the Australian Harlequin tusk, which is stunning. Yeah. The Indonesian Harlequin tusk. Let me look it looks up. pretty cool too. Um, Harlequin tusk. Uh, actually, here's a good uh, here's a good side by side. Yeah, please, because I look it up and it looks yes. like the same thing to me. <laughs> it's a good side by side. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. The, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the problem is Australia has a size quote on fish. You can't get a fish, I think, under like four inches from Australia. Huh. But Indonesia used to be able to import Harlequin tusks like the size of like a silver dollar. And I will find real quick here. I used to have a Harlequin tusk. Um, let me pull up my old tank thread. Um, I used to have a Harlequin tusk that's like the size of a silver dollar. It was really cool. And they have them at the Vancouver Aquarium. And it's super, I like them. They're actually, yeah, tusks are a great fish. They're very mellow. Like, just in terms of personality, they're very peaceful fish, but they will fucking annihilate non sessile birds. You have a clam, you have a snail, you have a hermit crab. It's what they eat, what they do. That's cool. Uh, but, I always wow. thought, I always assumed they were, like, aggressive because of their, well, look at his little teeth. Like, he looks, <laughs> he yeah, looks evil. They, 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 they have tusks. Yeah, the name, well, that makes sense. Um, adapted to eating. So let me just keep scrolling through and I'll, oh here, here was a cool fish. I, I here I'm looking through my old tank threads on on a forum. Oh nice. You guys like this guy? This guy was cool. Oh, is that a Caribbean species? Uh, it is, yeah. Because okay. I I saw them in Bonaire. You can't really identify flounders at species level, but dude, look how well he fucking oh, adapted, really? like, could blend in. Look at that guy. That is a sweet fish. Right. I, mean, I can I can barely see him. Like where he, I, I mean, I, I do see him, but like it's it's pretty epic. That is a great fish. Great fish, son. It, so I'm still trying to find a picture the picture of the thing about flounders is when you go to the beach and like they're you like step somewhere and they all scurry around and then you like can get one on to land on your hand or something. I like that. here. This this is uh this is pretty funny. So this fish right here, I got this fish for twenty five dollars. It was an unidentified ras at a wholesaler. I like ras. It's called a Marjorie Rass. So let me just show you. I paid twenty dollars for this fish. Mm -hmm. uh, let me find a website that's selling them. The female. Oh, the last one I found. Hey, I'm trying to find it. The last one I found was eight hundred dollars. Damn. Oh my god. Well, we'll come up right there. But hang on, I'm still trying to find this picture. I keep being distracted of how cool my rethink used to be. I'll put. Oh wait, there it is. There it is. Oh yeah, this guy's adorable. Uh, mo, 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 mo. yeah, check it out. Beauty. Oh, how wholesome is that little fish? That's so cute. They're so cute when they're babies, yeah. Oh my god. Here, just to give you an example, this is like my beef tank. Oh, <laughs> this, 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 like, like, this is the one where you like were controlling like every fucking like tiny detail. The whole, the whole, the whole tank was like completely computerized. Yeah, this was this is the state of my reef keeping. I like, I like the vivarium. <laughs> I had a uh, Vitatis poison dart frogs in there, oh, and they nice. sucked. They, you never saw them. They wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> rivet, rivet, rivet. Oh, it makes it's like a. <laughs> oh, there you go. I want to. I want to do a once corn once all this bullshit's over. I want to go to the Vancouver Aquarium and just record a video of like me walking through it, so you guys can see. It's pretty based. I think I was there once actually. It's cool. I quite like it. I mean, it depends how long ago you went because it's gotten a lot better. It would, it would be a long time ago. I've been yeah, BC yeah, for a while. Got, got I actually, time. I've been. I was planning on making a trip to BC this summer, but, but um, yeah. we have some virus problems. I wanted to go scuba diving there again. Yeah, they based cold water. I've been. Uh, your boy's been spending a while trying to find himself a blunt nose six gill, but I have yet to find one underwater. Six gills are sweet. Best shark. Why go, Oscar? What's the best shark? Best shark, um, best shark. In 
it depends on what we're considering a best shark because obviously goblin sharks and frill sharks are cool as fuck. Yeah. Obviously Greenland sharks are badass, but they're also a Greenland shark can't be the best shark. Years. This thing could look like five hundred years old. Being five hundred year is good, but most of them being blind because they have eye parasites is really not good. So they're not gonna be best shark. I'm yeah. gonna say best shark is probably uh, the epaulette shark. I like pressures because they go zoom. Oh, epaulets are cool. They're actually easy to keep in aquariums. They're easy to um, keep. And have you ever seen an epaulette shark and just been like, "That's the most beautiful shark." You know, you know they keep. Uh, they're actually an inner tidal species, especially when they're small. They like climb in and out of the reef. They like walk on land. Oh, yeah. Wait, really? No. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'll find a video. I want, yeah. Further uh, proof. But... Further proof. Their best shark. Uh, Favorite shark I've ever dealt with are lemon sharks because they run into you and they don't give a shit. They like, straight up headbutt you. Um, I like the one time we were uh, on a we were in uh, Mexico, we we're out on the epic boat ride and I saw a thresher shark jump a few times. It was pretty holy cool. shit! Hang on, I found like awesome. Oh damn it! Times already beat me too. Yeah, there's like some <laughs> let me, fishing. Let me see this, bro. This is like good. This is, oh, it's Nat Geo. Oh no, it's SP. Uh, yeah. Shark paludarium, anyone? Shark paludarium. Bro, it's so cute. <laughs> look at him yeah, walk. You know, I, uh, think, I think my favorite shark, though, in general, is the sand tiger. I just think they look oh, like... Those, that's a great yeah, fucking choice. Sand, sand tiger sharks just look edgy. They look edgy and they're chill as fuck. Fuck, yeah. thanks for sharing this information. I love this thing. If you if you ever go to North Carolina, go around 120 feet down during around I believe it's September. You can double check me on that. Uh, once again, fact check me because I might be wrong. You can find mm -hmm. tons of sand tigers. It's the only place in the world you can just reliably dive with them 24/7. They don't give a shit about you. They're beautiful. Sand tigers. They're shirt. just Ooh. chill. Um, oh, look one at thing. Teeth. There's That's also cool. another fun fact is that um, there's a pregnant one at I don't remember which zoo, but. Um, some scuba diver was trying to move it to another tank, and I don't know what they were trying to do, but it bit their arm and it started rolling, and it almost tore a dude's arm off. They can mess you off if they're like. Actually, uh, very for public aquariums, sand tigers are very. Uh, I mean, yeah, you might have some bad apples, but they they're very um, lethargic species. Um, they they do well in a public like if you're have like a, you know, hundred thousand gallon shark tank like a Sea World or something. They're actually a very good species of shark for, for that. They're actually very. Uh, ideal for public aquariums the worst shark public aquariums are fucking nurse sharks because they get 15 feet long it's funny you, you say that because these guys these guys do not look nice <laughs> yeah that's what's so fun that's what makes yeah sense. um nurse sharks you used to be able to buy a juvenile nurse shark for like 20 dollars i was in the hobby you could buy a juvenile nurse shark for 20 dollars and the motherfucker will get 15 feet long bro. it wasn't that long ago it was like a decade ago the, I, the vancouver aquarium has one there's a tank with some there's black Stupid. tip. There's black tips. There's a nurse shark, and there's I don't know. There's some, I think there's a turtle. I guarantee, if you can catch an Aquarius and be like, "Where'd that nurse shark come from?" They would be like, "Oh, some dumbass bought it for their aquarium, and they had to give it to us." Guarantee. <laughs> it's probably yeah. I, I... yeah. I mean, definitely, my bucket list shark to see in the wild is a blunt nose six gill, because they're so rare. They're usually deep water, and you have to get lucky to have one come up. And usually oh, was that BC, the actually? Was that the one in the? Oh, I think this was in the Blue Planet documentary in the. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, pretty yeah. deep water. They're they're amazing. Bro, just so, uh, go all the way down. Either. Oscar, yeah, we, we talked about the Blackwater dive, right? How about the what? Blackwater dive in Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii in uh, oh, yeah, October. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, do that Blackwater dive. Blackwater oh dive is beautiful. Oh my god! Like my that's like my dream dive. Oh my god! So yeah, that's spiritual. Just to fill you in, basically, what the Blackwater dive is is they take you out at like eight or nine o'clock, like when it's like dark out. Okay. They take you out. To, they take you out to the open ocean. So it's like Ooh. thousands of. Yeah. I mean, how spooky this is. They drop a line, and they you attach the line. You go scuba diving. You just drop down like fifty feet into the abyss. Oh my god. Pitch black dark, and then they turn on a light, and you just see like manta rays, like. 20 foot wingspan manta rays just come up and just whoosh right in your face and like it tracks all this plankton all this plankton just comes toward the light and it's here i'll find the video it's the trippiest like i mean it, like it's, it's terrifying like if you're afraid of deep water or like afraid of like what's underneath you in the ocean it's like probably the most triggering terrifying thing you can do i, I, I but, can't tell I, i've always had such mixed feelings about that because like i i can't tell if i would love that or absolutely hate it oh i know that's i mean it's like it's well that's the thing is it's like super dude here's a video of it 
I think I just like, don't have to think about like even like sometimes I'll just be freaking like I remember this happened this year I was just like snorkeling just chilling and then for a moment like I don't know I just thought about like something coming out to me and it scared the shit out of me but then I was fine again because I saw a fish. And I, I was diving. It was in fresh water and Fuck, this is so cool. You could the the visibility was about twelve inches. Um, it was just murk, just green. It was horrific to look at. So I was just I was just on a line and we were just descending with a line because if you don't have a line, you can't tell which way's up and which way's down. Yeah. Because it's just so, it's terrifying. So I was just putting one hand in front of the other on a rope that went down. It was about 300 feet of water in this area, but we were descending to an area that was around 120 feet down. Um, we saw a wreck, which was pretty nice. We dove in. It was a wreck dive, but um, absolutely terrifying. But that's exactly what makes it fun. Yeah. Uh, what about? Uh, I was What's watching. Oh. No, you, you, you talk first because mine's kind of. Um, I did a I did a really comfy shore dive and came in. It was a night dive. I think we dove. We like dropped in a. We dropped in a pier in like ten feet of water and just kept swimming. Um, it was like at nine o'clock at night. Oh, yeah. First off, yeah. just. Coral just turns. Remember, coral turns inside out at nighttime. Everything's. Oh, deep. I remember watching that. That's yeah. Yeah, uh, and that, that that that's replicated in aquariums too. It's really cool to watch. That's but dope. what was really creepy about the dive? I mean, we were in a bay, like like it wasn't like anywhere spooky. We're the fucking tarpon, man. We would just turn around and there'd be this like six foot long silver tarpon just staring at you, and like and then you just you see your light and there's they're silverfish. So they just like shimmer. And oh my god, these fucking tarpon would seriously make you like drop your regulator out of your mouth. You would freak out so bad. These things they're just like they were creepers, man. They were just creep on them. And that's a anyway. big fucking fish too. Yeah, tarpon I, I actually uh I, I uh I bought a couple Atlantic tarpon uh back when you could buy cool shit. They were not cheap actually. Tarpon were like hundred and fifty bucks, two hundred bucks wholesale, but they were cool. They 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 were the size of like maybe like three or four inches long. And those fuckers could eat like you wouldn't believe. Shit. I, I wanted to ask, you were talking about diving and stuff, and um, I was watching a lot of these videos earlier this week because I'm bored as hell, right? And um, what do you guys think of underwater cave diving? Because that terrifies the shit out of me, and I would rather yeah, do anything yeah, else than that. No, I wouldn't fuck okay, with that. All right. uh, well, I'm actually... <laughs> I am going to be taking a course on it within the next two are you, Are you going to get your cert? Bro. Yep. In the cave diving cert. That I usually... scares the shit out of me. Uh, no, that, that would clean up too. I want to go dive in the sea notes in Mexico. Like, uh, watching, like, I was watching cave, like, explorations. Like, I actually found, um, I actually found, like, the, there's, like, the one guy who posted footage of the Nutty Putty before it was, like, sealed off because that dude died in there. And I'm like, all right, this is pretty bad. And then, then my, I'm like, guys, cave exploration is freaking me out. And this one dude's like, oh, yeah, but what about underwater cave exploration? I'm like, oh, yes, that's, that's great. And then, uh, well, there's I, a video you can watch it on youtube the guy who's like talking like the guy that died and you can like hear him be like all right man well this is probably the last thing you'll ever hear from me oh they actually have the i, I didn't even look for the audio that's okay. oh it's, it's some it's some seriously doomer shit oh is that the the david shaw dive yeah yeah you that can was, like, basically, you can basically hear the recording that was sad that's some that was, shit. That was sad Did, yeah. um thank you. i don't know if this was the David Shaw incident or another one, but um, there was two guys going down to, I believe they're going down a thousand five hundred feet or something like that. They were going down a crazy amount. Were they tech divers? Like, yeah, they were advanced tech divers. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, one of them, as they were heading back, one of them just disappeared and um, huh. died. The other one returned to the surface. This guy was just gone. They never found him. So then. Um, with a submersible i think they found his body location and then two of his friends who were also super advanced tech divers went down to go and recover his body same thing happened to one of them oh i know what you're talking about yeah the, that was in the cave right or something like that. Um, oh no it was just it was oh, tech diving okay. oh okay never mind because there's this there was this underwater cave like, i don't freaking know what happened basically a kid died and then the parents wanted his body recovered so another guy volunteered to go dive and get it and then he took too long, and then he died. Basically, I, I don't. If agree. that was if that was in America, it's probably in Florida. I think it's Eagles Nest or something like oh, that. It's I'll, the I'll big. Try to find this it ha actually. happened. It happened here, man. Like, dude, it's so you can easily fuck your shit up. There was a couple that uh, 
they 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 went dry suit diving with no training whatsoever and they you know they were actually it was a shore dive they were only down about 60 80 feet and the guy just uh uh basically didn't realize how much air he had to shot up to the surface and die like yeah. like instantly like a very experienced diver just never fucked with a dry suit you know like it's we... uh easy to do yeah. have you ever pissed me in a dry suit i've never pissed in my dry suit <laughs> the only reason I don't want a dry suit is because I pee it all the time. Wait, what happens if you piss so, in a dry suit? You're uh, it, well, it, it, you're dry inside. It's not like a wetsuit. Oh, you just... fuck. No. You, you, but some of them have a pee valve so that you can specifically pee. But with, I don't get a pee valve because I can hold it. Uh, but if I were to pee in my suit, it just it would, it holds in everything to keep you dry. Oh, that, yeah, that, so okay, just, that makes perfect sense. I, yeah. I just be in a little dry pot of my piss. So. <laughs> I was going to say, a bonnet head shark is like a miniature hammerhead. If you don't What's know. up, gamers? Oh, God. Andy. And now Andy. Andy's on. like, Andy, like, literally, everyone's like, okay, let's finish up here. We're going to be going to bed soon. Andy, what up, gamer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to keep going. Uh, no, I'm going to bed, but... I yeah, hang on. Before we wrap up, uh, Andy, what is your least favorite fish and why? You can't say betas, guppies, goldfish. Like, yeah, it's be like a nothing smash. legit wild caught species. Yeah, uh, I like a lot of fish though. Um, but what don't you like? Everyone does like. For example, Oscar hates grommies. I hate kings and certain fish. Send a palm are grommies, idiot. No, they're in the same genus. They're just they're they're anabatinoids, I mean, but they're not. I mean. And he says pencils are tetras, so I don't know. Pencil fish are tetras. All carous deformies are tetras. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm not fine with that. I'm just saying. I'm trying um, to lay down the My least favorite the fish. Opinion. The first thing that comes to mind is maroon clowns, honestly. Premnus. Um, like, oh, I like premnus. I don't like... Well, I don't like love them. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but I don't hate them. That's true. I'm trying to think of other things I don't like. Everything, most of the fish I don't like are smash, you know, like blood parrots, fucking yeah, but yeah, smash platies. And you know what I don't like now is hatchet fish, because why? Because they just kill each other. <laughs> Base. And it gets me like nine, they all kill each other. I'm like, all right, that was worth it. Yeah, I don't know. If I were you, I'd try like um a group of marble hatchets, get like yeah, a dozen of them. I was just going to, I was literally just going to do that because they small and they cute. All right, so okay, um, actually, won't bless or Oscar. Don't leave yet because I got another question for Andy. Okay, <laughs> what's up? Least favorite just... plant, <laughs> worst aquarium plant. All, all, all aquarium plants. They're stupid. Um, uh, boost so... the cephalandra. There you go. That's the so... worst. I like so... boost. What about um <laughs> dwarf baby tears? Yeah, dwarf baby tears. Honestly, is probably my least favorite plant. <laughs> I just don't like most plants. You know, any plant so... that's like. Dur, I need CO2. <laughs> like, fuck you, man. You know, plants that need CO2 to maybe be more red or need CO2 to, uh, and they'll grow faster, those are fine. But, but plants that, like, explicitly off. need CO2 or they'll just fucking die, the that's second, stupid. Why would I, why would I keep a plant that I have to baby to keep alive? The second you put, okay. the second I, I you put... It's a terrestrial plant that you're like, oh man, I'm gonna try to get this terrestrial plant to live underwater, like baby tears. Yeah. It's fucking you... stupid. It's like taking like, hey man, I'm gonna try to take this miniature poodle to make it live underwater. <laughs> it's not gonna fucking work. Yeah, actually, well, fuck, you're right. But instead of CO2, you inject water into the, <laughs> you inject air into the tank, and then the poodle can breathe. You, so we have stupid. to do the, uh, you have to do the plant day on another day when you can unmute Guffy because he'll talk for two hours about this. <laughs> Um, him? Yeah. Yeah. you know what yeah. funk though that's kind of funny though you mentioned like because it's just a stupid terrestrial plant because like this is so stupid like i chuck some moss in my tank like it doesn't even need to be aquatic it just grows like it's great so yeah think, i'll probably uh, never have a co2 tank so it's fucking expensive for what benefit Oh, I I can grow hornwort just fine without you can CO2. Keep Monte, you can keep monte carlo Woo. monte carlo is fine without co2 with oh, just really some highlight so. i'm um I'm going to head to bed. Um, I think this first podcast, the problem is that there's going to be so much um, stuff that needs to be edited out that it might be a bit of a nightmare. Well, that's but... okay. Every video I make for you guys is a nightmare because I'm trying to edit and trying to make it good and then Funk's going, where's the video? <laughs> <laughs>